Have you been hearing all about berberine and it's been touted as nature's ozempic and the next best weight loss supplement? Wondering if it actually works and it's worth all the hype? Well, I'm going to be giving you my full, complete and honest review as a health coach who tested out using berberine to help aid weight loss. We're going to look at the science and then I'm going to be sharing my own experience to see whether it worked for me. Now, berberine is being given all of the hype as being nature's ozempic. You may have heard of the weight loss drug Ozempic, also known as Wagovi or a semiglutide. A lot of people have been reporting about taking these weight loss injections. And I'm always really wary when any new drug comes onto the market. I've seen some people talking about incredible transformations and how it's really helped them to take control of their eating habits and behaviors. However, I've seen just as many horror stories. And I think the underlying problem with a lot of those horror stories is that it doesn't re really address a lot of the underlying principles or challenges that people face when it comes to being able to lose weight in a safe and sustainable way. A lot of people are looking at overall weight loss, which on these drugs can be quite significant and dramatic, which can also be catastrophic when it comes to your metabolic health. So unless you're gonna be able to take this drug for the rest of your life, I think we also need to explore other options. I will always be a huge supporter of trying to navigate our health, wellness, and weight loss if it's a goal for you in the most natural way possible so that it is also sustainable. So when I've seen a lot of people talking about berberine and it is a natural supplement. It is something that comes from nature. It's something that I was quite interested in exploring, particularly some of the health benefits that have been associated with berberine. For myself in particular, I had what I believed was perimenopausal symptoms. I've now actually got to the root cause of that and it is not perimenopause at all and I'm actually suffering from PCOS, so polycystic ovarian syndrome, which really <laughs> explains a lot, which is actually quite interesting on why I've had many of the struggles that I've had with being able to lose weight or maintain my healthy body weight that I am more accustomed to, particularly over the last few years. Now, although I've been diagnosed with PCOS, PCOS and perimenopause or symptoms have a lot of similarities. So this really speaks to the midlife woman who is generally who I help, looking at some of the issues related to that, particularly with insulin resistance, managing your blood sugar levels, managing your hunger levels and the amount of food that you need to eat. Because we get a lot of information, we know that we need to be managing our calorie intake, we know that we need to be looking at effective exercise strategies, yet I'd found over the last few years, my eating habits haven't changed significantly at all. I still exercise really regularly and yet I'd got to the point where I was increasing weight and when, when I was being intentional about trying to lose weight, it was becoming harder and harder and harder. And so it's always important that you do investigate any underlying issues that might be going on for you and that you speak to your doctor, especially before taking any new supplement or protocol. You've got to go in with this with your eyes wide open and also speak and get medical expert opinion. A lot of women I speak to are struggling and they are suffering and they are coming up against the same brick wall where they are trying to lose weight and that they're not being able to do successfully or like they were as easily in their 20s and 30s and the truth is as we get older our bodies do change but there is still a lot you can do to support good health and manage a healthy body weight. So when I started to do in some more of my own research into berberine, I was really interested to see some of the things that it has been linked with. It's bright yellow in color. It's been used in traditional medicine for centuries. And more recently, it's been gaining a lot of popularity specifically in its use for weight loss. The recent studies have looked at its ability to regulate blood sugar levels, metabolism, to reduce inflammation, reduce cholesterol and support fat loss. And I've actually done this as a blog post as well so the link to that will be down in the description where I will give links to each of the specific studies. Now it should be noted that some of this does, we need more human research. A lot of the studies that have been done have been done on animals or if they have been done on specifically overweight or obese study participants. So whilst it's showing good markers for supporting these elements particularly within fat loss or weight loss, it should be noted that this is still new in terms of the science and the research that's out there. And there's a lot of questions that are left unanswered. 
So when it comes into the effectiveness of supplements like this, of course, we only have to go to TikTok and I could find an abundance of people who were absolutely raving about the benefits of berberine, how it's helped them to lose weight, how it's helped them to manage their appetite, to curb cravings, and just to get to a feeling where they aren't constantly thinking about food all the time. And this is a major side effect of the injectable drugs that people have been taking is that, that they're no longer feeling like they need to constantly think about food all the time. I don't know about you, but I'm always thinking about what's my next meal? Oh, I'm hungry. What can I eat? Just being able to get freedom from that feels like it's something that a lot of women are working towards. So some people are reporting weight loss and that has helped them to shed pounds while other people have found that it hasn't really improved impacted them at all and they haven't been able to lose any weight. So the results are very mixed. And with any supplement, you are all individually and biologically different. How one person responds to something is not always how another person responds. And I'm going to share that and a good example of that in my own experience of using this supplement. So just a little bit of a background on me. Yes, I am a health coach. I have spent my entire life dedicated onto all things health and wellness. And I've just been diagnosed with PCOS. And at the time when I initially started taking this, I wasn't aware of this diagnosis. I still thought I was perimenopausal. I have always had a sweet tooth. I get sugar cravings. I love carbs as much as anybody else does. But I've always felt that I struggle slightly more so these last few years with potentially having a little bit of insulin resistance resistance, meaning that I don't feel like I manage those rises and crashes in my blood sugar levels as much as I potentially did when I was much younger. Now I've got my PCOS diagnosis, that makes a lot more sense. So I do get quite significant energy dips if I feel like I've not eaten enough. Or even when I'm trying to make healthier choices. I find it increasingly hard to sustain those healthy choices because I feel like I get this drop in my blood sugar levels and we not just hangry to the point where I get really irritable. I need something to eat at that moment. So these are kind of the challenges that I'm facing because we all know that we need to be consuming less calories, but it's not always easy to sustain that calorie deficit when your body's giving you signals of something else that you're constantly hungry and searching and reaching for food all the time. And this is where the challenge for many women, whether it is PCOS or whether it is menopause that we come to face is that although we know we need to be in a calorie deficit, it's not always that easy to stick to. And this is actually the main function of things like Ozempic or metformin is that it helps regulate your appetite. And really that's all that many of us midlife women want, like I've just expressed. If my blood sugar levels are low, I need to eat. However, if my blood sugar levels are going to remain balanced, then I'm going to be able to better make supportive choices for aiding weight loss. I bought these from iHerb and I will leave the link down in the description. And actually, berberines have become really hard to get hold of because of all of the people that are raving about it on the internet. And one thing that I would say, if you are going to try this out, first of all, do speak to a health professional first before you ta start taking any supplement. And please don't take this as medical advice. I'm simply sharing my own experience. So when you are choosing a supplement, always go for something that is third party lab tested this means that it has gone through stringent tests and that it is a good quality source. There is going to be a load of junk that's going to be pumped out onto places like Amazon. Now, I went in and got a tablet that is a thousand milligram supplement. And I think it was where my first downfall was. So I'd probably recommend starting with a 500 milligram, a lower dose, and then starting off with that and seeing how you get on. So from my own experience, I started taking this. It's advised to take two, up to 2000 milligrams. So you're taking one with one meal just before a meal, and then second later on in the day. And the idea is that when you're taking it with a meal, you're not going to get such an increase in your blood sugar levels, it's going to be a slower increase and in that it's going to be better balanced, meaning that you then manage your hunger and satiety levels. However, that was not the case with me. So I do think I made the mistake of going in with a too high dose to start off with. And what happened was I think it lowered, and this is going off my own experience. I don't have any scientific knowledge to back this up. And I will touch on that later um, as I don't think I'm going to completely give up on this. So I think I went in with a too high a dose. And what happened was I felt like 
I dropped my blood sugar levels down too low. I felt so hungry. So it, it had the opposite effect in that I lowered my blood sugar levels. I felt hungry all day long. Like literally I could not eat enough to satisfy my hunger needs. I got headaches. I literally felt like crap. I felt awful. I had stopped taking it about three or four days in. I was looking through some of the experiences. Some, some people have reported having this kind of die off phase because it is supposed to support good gut health. But during that, there can be a die off phase, I believe, in the gut, which can lead to feelings of when the body's going kind of through a detoxification process. So during the week that I was taking it, I was super low energy. I was fatigued. I had headaches. I had considered that maybe it was hormonal hormonal fluctuations again as well I've got the condition going on with my PCOS was it around the time of the month my cycle is completely out of sync at the moment so I couldn't really put it down to one thing but I just decided to stop taking it I felt like it wasn't really working for me in terms of helping to manage my blood sugar levels and that I needed to do more with my diet and my lifestyle to balance things out before I would attempt taking this again in conclusion with this a lot of the research is looking really really good to support the use of berberine for weight loss, improved health, helping reduce inflammation, helping improve gut health, helping to be able to manage hunger and cravings. Did it work for me? No, it did not. I felt like complete crap. However, like I said, this was before my PCOS diagnosis. Now I've got that diagnosis. I've got some tools and resources that I'm going to be working with to help me to manage those symptoms more naturally. I'm also going to be looking into getting a continuous glucose monitor so I can more accurately measure my blood glucose levels and see what's going on there with the foods that I'm eating so that I can make adjustments and changes then. And then once I've got a better idea of what's actually going on within my own body, then I would potentially try berberine again. So I think there could be potential for this supplement. There definitely needs to be more research on more human studies on more people who are not severely obese and maybe just looking for a moderate amount of weight loss to get into a healthier weight loss range. It could be supportive to that journey. But please keep in mind, not everybody is going to respond to supplements in the same way as my own experience has highlighted. It's very rarely a one fit size fits all approach. And whenever ever I do my supplement recommendations or reviews on anything, please, please keep in mind that none of this is a magic fix. You cannot expect to go in and to take this supplement and it's going to fix everything. It has to go hand in hand with other healthy habits and lifestyle changes. If you can then do that and use this as a supportive tool to help you to be able to better maintain those health habits, don't just expect it to be a tablet that you're going to take and you're going to drop pounds instantly. That is not what this is about. It is supposed to be used as a tool to support your changes and shifts with your diet and your exercise so that you can do it in a way that is going to be supportive to the long term. And we also want to keep in mind that quick weight loss is not the goal here. We want to be slow. We want to be sustainable. We want to find a practice that we can keep on going with, with the long term. If you are thinking about taking this, I would definitely consider talking to a dietitian or a nutritional specialist for jumping in and taking any new supplement. If you are someone who's taken berberine already, I'd love to hear about your own experiences. Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for being here and until next time.